you can see my screen, this is uh, the topic before us tonight. It's called addressing boundaries, boundaries issues with kids. You know, kids need parents with boundaries. Um, kids are amazing gift from God. Our children, they are heritage. Uh, the book of Psalms said that he said children are heritage. They are blessings from God. You know, they are awesome blessings. So um, th this opening line is very, very important. It says, if you are a parent, you have received a divine gift. You have received a divine gift. Children are not a liability. I know in some people... Uh, you know, get angry and get depression because they, all they saw, saw in children is, you know, trouble, uh, uh, stressful. Uh, but children are a gift from God. They are divine gift. If you are a parent, that is, you, you have received a divine gift from God. And um, it, it, there's no other way to explain because life comes from God. Life does not come from any. The devil never give anybody life. All life originates from heaven, okay? So with the gift, of course, comes a great responsibility also. You know, that begins from birth and that continues until those, our children leave home. Um, it is a gift, but it is also a responsibility. Uh, because every child is a complete human being. No child is a robot. And they come in with different personalities. We talked about personalities earlier as we were preparing for tonight. Each and every one of our children has his own or her own personalities. So it is a great responsibility. And you are to help him or her develop good and matured characters. These are part of the training process, you know, we give to our children. So we here we go have in Proverbs chapter 22, verse six. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I know a lot of us know this scripture. It's interesting because uh, the word train is the word we have as educate, to teach. Train a child, train up a child in a way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from that. Uh, I love how TPT, which is the, the passion translation. This is how he puts it. He said, dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go. And the values they've learned from you will be with them for life. Wow. The value our children learn from us will be with them for life. Before our children step out to go to any school or any kindy, their lives are formed by our presence, our home, our environment. Many things they learn, they've already learned, they have already, accept, you know, get some foundations before they step out. The great, you know, our children spend more time with us than they spend out. Of course, there comes a time when they start to go to school. And now they are now exposed or open to other types of learnings. But if the foundation is right, they will never go astray. They will never depart from it. It's really interesting that we understand this. It's a God-given responsibility. That before any external influence, the, what is going to uh, uh, affect our kids far more is the internal influence, the influence around the home, around the family. These are what actually 
prepare them for life. And uh, that's where we take parenting very, very serious as, uh, as believers. Okay, so we define character as the sum of our children, you know, uh, as the sum of our child's ability to meet with demands of life. This is really important for each and every one of us because helping them, training them is to help them build characters. Okay, it is very, very important. And uh, life has all sorts of requirements. And from getting, from getting and maintaining good relationship to having self-control to developing a spiritual life. It is, these are not, you know, these are imparted. We learn this from each other. We learn it from our parents. We learn it within our family unit. It is very, very important. What makes life is not so much what is learned outside. By the time our children are ready to go to school, they have they 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 have formed they have a formed idea of what life is all about, and if those things are missing, the result is going to be identity crisis. And we look at the world today, and some of the problem the world is have, having is where some of these things are missing from the young age, you know, the young age of children. If anyone today don't know whether he's a man or a woman, you know, doesn't know what they are, uh, uh, what life is all about for them, somehow something is missing in their upbringing, in helping to form their identity and uh, who they are, you know, and that's why they go through life, still don't know who they are. Okay, that's a problem. So, boundary uh, is, 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 is very, very important for us. So, as a parent, you invest in providing those needed skills as well as abilities in our children. You know, that's, that's our responsibility, providing those needed skills and abilities. Okay, so boundary conversations with our children are most useful as they become internalized. That is taken in emotionally as well as cognitively because everything we teach, everything we express around our children is all part of learning that we must know, that we must understand because it's very, very important. So boundary has to do with conversations with our children because each time we are talking, each time we, we are training, each time we are telling them something, each time we are showing them something, each time they are looking at us, the way we relate with people, they are learning. And that is helping to form their emotional lives as well as the way they look at life itself, okay? So when the internalization process works, the work of the parent becomes part of the makeup of a child. Every time they look at us, what they see, what they observe, you know, they take it in and it actually become pretty much part of their lives. So what was external is now internal. What was once outside of them, what was once outside of what they can see, what they can look at, they have taken it on board and it is now, it is becoming to form their identity. If it is wrong kind of information, 
guess what? It start to form a very strong false identity. But kids don't know how to interpret this. They will take it on board. That's why, you know, whatever we do around kids, you think they are not observing. You think they are not learning. They learn. They taking in a lot. Okay. So over time, the child becomes a self-monitoring, self-correcting person in contrast to someone who needs constant supervision and correction from others. I know. I I watch. Uh, uh, even while I was away, I have. Uh, my handkerchief, uh, there is uh, something that I put in hanky, it's called peppermint. And each time I will, uh, you know, when I have blocked nose or what, I just use it. Now, while I was away, my little grandchild that is just two years, few times he's seen me do that. While I was away, you know, he will go and take uh, tissues, and he will hold it and put it over his face. And they ask him, what are you doing? He said, that's my, what my grandpa do, you know. And all of a sudden, <laughs> he take the tissues and he will close his face. And they say, what are you doing? He said, that's, my, that's what my grandpa do. And uh, you think he's not learning. But there was no time I actually said, OK, now I'm teaching you. This is what you're going to do. But he saw me do that, and he started doing it. You know, our children learn so much from us. It is very, very important. That is why it's not just uh, showing them by our actions, but we got to engage in conversation. Con conversation is very, very unique because that is where we actually reinterpret truths and help our children to begin to understand what is happening around them and uh, what life is all about okay so when when the day comes that your child is faced with an invitation to take drugs or have sex outside of marriage or cheat you will not be around to help however the internalized conversations you have had over the years will be inside them and part of them and if all goes well, we'll help them to the, you know, to do the right things. A lot of, uh, you know, kids have so much avenues today. There are so much that is clamoring that is trying to form and reform children. But our responsibility as parents is actually to help them learn to help them understand what life is all about. Things that we fail to teach them, someone else out there is ready to teach them. And when those times come, if the foundation is already taking place in them, if they have come to understand the truth, as the scripture said, train up a child, you know, the way he should go, so that when he's old, he will not depart from that. There is a scripture, that uh, talks about the children of uh, Rechabites, you know, in the Old Testament. And uh, the, 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 uh, God actually told uh, one of the prophets, I think Isaiah, he said, go and call, uh, go to the house of Rechabites and call the children. And uh, when they were called, and uh, he said, okay, put out a uh, drink before them, let them drink. And they just put out drinks and they look at each other and they say to the prophet, he said, no, we don't. He said, why? He said, no, no, we, we, uh, we learned not to. Our father taught us not to. And that becomes a teaching thing for, uh, from, 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 the, from the prophet. God said, listen, if these children can listen to what their father told them, he said, how come the whole nation Israel do not listen? They do not do what I have asked them to do. So learning is pretty much uh, our responsibility is to help our children to understand the difference, to know what is right from wrong as the world will want to impress it on, on us and on them. So all parents need to come to terms with this reality. 
And that reality is that one day, your child will be on his or her own in the world. They're going to step out and they're going to be on their own. And But then, this is where it gets interesting. If they are out there, we, we, know we should have done our part in helping them understand and prepare them for what was ahead. And this is really good. You know, when we, this teaching is not meant to be a guilt trip, you know, to show us what we done and what we didn't do. Um, these, are, these are practical truths. I know many of us, especially like me, I look back to my life. I look back to the way I grew up. I look back to where I come from, where I really had no, 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 no much input from my dad, whom I never really know from the age of five. And um, the, what we went through, uh, the war was, did not help either in Nigeria. And that after three years of devastating war, um, I thought I would have died. But thank God that I did not die. I was alive. And I look back to see how much influence, how much I learned, how much, you know, learning from either my father or my mother. Um, there wasn't really much because when my mom could not really look after me, she let me go. She let me go and be with other people. And uh, with the people I stayed with, um, they used me more as a servant than anything, than building my life or helping me to, you know, showing me what life is all about. If anything, I start parenting at that uh, very little age where I'm helping to train other people's children, kind of, you know. And uh, while out there, it, it, the, 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 the world, it's like I was lost because I don't know who I was. But the remarkable thing that happened in my life was when I discovered that God is my heavenly father. When I gave my life to Jesus, you know, we had the, the, the series on the wheel of life where every aspect of our lives has to be, you know, must not be neglected. Uh, I look at the, the, the positiveness of me discovering the truth, knowing that God is my father. And what effect that had in my life. You see, they, they, my spiritual life actually become my learning platform. Every other thing I learned, because I remember after I got married and then um, God began to bless us with children. And here comes children, but I don't know what it means to parent. I, nobody taught me. I have not learned from anybody my skill of parenting become what I know or what I have learned from the scripture, what I've learned from the word of God. One of the things that made my wife to love me so much was before, you know, as a single uh, bachelor pastor, I teach marriage more better than anybody. You know, it sounds so good, but everything I was teaching was theory. I wasn't married. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I can look at, you know, dish out all these things that, um, wow, people think that I was so great. But when I got married, then reality hit. And then all of a sudden, I have to relearn. I have to actually, uh, the Holy Spirit becomes my teacher. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as God begin to bless us with children, one of the, uh, the lowest moments of my life will be after my whole family joined me in New Zealand. We were out on a, on a, uh, on a, a holiday that uh, some friends have arranged for us. And um, uh, my oldest did something to the youngest one. I was doing dishes and I had the wooden spoon. I was just washing the wooden is it brush? Yeah. Uh, okay. The brush used to wash plates. And um, I had it in my hand. When the little child cried, and I turned around with that brush washing uh, plates, 
brush in my hand, I just release it and it hit my son's head. And uh, the next thing I saw was blood. Blood just came out. The way I reacted, you know, I stopped and I actually, I cried. I said, what led me to this? Why? Now, all of a sudden, I discovered that I actually was reacting the way I was treated, you know, the way everything I do as a little, you know, somebody will whack my head or come from behind and flog me or strip me. And there will be so much thing done in the name of training or correcting. And that one act caused me to stop and say, where is this coming from? You know, and that was a massive learning curve for me. And the way not to, and how not to train children, how not to deal with children. And yeah, so this, the goal of parenting, actually the parent, the parent-child relationship is very, very unique. It is the only God-designed relationship whose goal is to separation, not connection. Because as our children grow, they, we, we're going to lose them someday. We lose in the sense that they're going to move away. They're going to move out. They, we, and we are not going to live together. And God designed that they will be separated. But at that point, what have they learned? What do they know? What have we helped to prepare them? I think that is where what we are learning tonight is very, very important for us. Okay. So how your child has internalized uh, grace and truth from you will make a big difference in how he or she handles relationship responsibilities, stress, temptations, as well as failure. What have we prepared them for? I know that people, some of us who grew under uh, authority, authority, authorita authoritative uh, parenting, we are, you know, when dad call your name, Anthony, your heart will just flip because you know you are in trouble. Um, some of those kind of things become a very uh, negative form of training for us. And uh, we relate with our, some of our parents with fear. And uh, we are not really appreciated. We are not actually a firm. Um, it's like nothing we do is enough for them. Things like that has a very negative effect in our lives. We are some of us grow up believing that we are not good enough, we are worthless, we cannot do anything, we cannot speak. You know, if we are shut down, uh, uh, shut up or shut down a lot when we are speaking or when we are talking, we grew up not to talk. You know, speaking in public becomes a problem. So these are things we want to avoid. It is different under God's family. As God's children, we are agents to nurture and to help our children because what they learn from us is not going to depart from them. That's what the scripture says. So be sure to make boundary talk a normal part of your child's life. Boundary talks is very, very important. Okay? And uh, that is where we... The, the whole difference begin to come. I look through my life, how, you know, nobody really helped me. Nobody helped to, you know, what I'm doing tonight, nobody did it for me. But I thank God for the difference knowing him has made. And of course, over the years, uh, for me, everything I know is on the job, on the job training, you know, on the job and uh, of, of skilling myself and doing a course like this in the 90s that actually prepare me because all of a sudden I found out that here is another, you know, kid trying to raise another, you know, raise kids. You know, we're trying to do things uh, the best we can, but the best we know is the wrong way. But thank God that truth has set us free. We know better today. 
So what are the boundary conversations? I say their moms and dads are often hesitant or afraid to confront their children. A lot of the time we are hesitating. You know, we don't think it's important, okay? Some do not even want their child to be unhappy. I know parents like that too. Uh, the child won't even cry and they are there. You know, I don't want to make my child unhappy. And if there is anything unhappy, we think it's my fault. I'm responsible. I did that or I caused that. That is not the best way. Others are easily worn down by their child's persistence and still others are afraid their children is too fragile and her self image might suffer. Okay, these are some of the reasons anything we are doing out of fear will always be counterproductive. We have seen that God have not given us the spirit of fear. He given us love, joy and sound mind love and peace it is anything that we are doing out of fear we actually we fall into a trap okay so while you need to be concerned about how your child experiences your boundary conversations this does not mean you should not confront with this word confrontation had a new meaning when we had the uh, boundaries in marriage uh few weeks back and the confrontation is that is a very healthy word where we address issues a heavenly father never really you know he's always out when something is not how it should be in the garden of eden when he come and he call out on adam he say what's going on what is going on you know and they confronting is not bad, but some people, uh, if our children are the type that have bullied us into submission, where we think we can't talk to them, we can't relate to them. Remember, kids are of different ages. We're going to see very soon. Um, uh, as much as young ones, also as much as older ones, because they are still our children, but language will change as time goes on, the way we relate and the way we talk to them. Here are some suggestions for having face-to-face -face confrontations with our children, okay? And um, there are seven things we're gonna look at, you know, and we'll do that really quickly. Um, one of them is taking initiatives. Uh, the second one is uh, staying connected going further than just talking because sometimes when we talk we don't follow it with actions okay containing as well as uh, empathize with them remembering that we have both younger and the uh, matured children their age differs as they grow we change our tone or our language we don't talk to a teenager the way we talk to uh, a, a toddler or a little kids. It's it's quite different, you know. Um, <laughs> my mom is old, but do you know each time I speak with her on phone, she wants to know whether I have been eating, whether I have had breakfast, or whether you know. And uh, I say, Mama, I think I have. And if 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 she gets to my wife, you say, Have you? feed my son, you know, somehow I'm still that little son that, um, you know, to her, she, she, she doesn't know that I can actually feed myself. <laughs> yeah. Another uh, point we're going to look at is the normalized protest as well as anger uh, as a response from our children, allowing some withdrawal, but not forever. Okay. So number one, Take the initiative, taking initiative here, yeah. say address a problem with your child right away. It is very, very important. The longer we wait, 
the greater the chances he or she will have trouble making the important association between his or their actions as well as the talk we are doing. When we delay issues and didn't look at them as it's happening, it becomes a real problem. It because if we treat it later, the, the child may not be able to connect the action with what we are talking about. But as we help them straight away or right away in any situation, it becomes easier for them to connect what we are talking about. A child's behavior diminishes in importance to them as time moves on. If the boundary conversation process goes right, in time, he or she will catch themselves without you. So instead of waiting, we might say something like, this is me. He said, I need to talk to you about your attitude lately. And uh, your child will say, but I'm busy. And uh, my response will be, I want you to finish what you are doing. But this can't wait. Let's go and talk. You know, this is really important. And um, it is showing that we are concerned. Keep up the initiative family, but gently. If you, you know, if you think it's important enough that you need to talk right away, we say so. We are not keeping things to you know to 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 go, and uh, if the longer any issue is, the harder it becomes to deal with. Okay, so at the same time, don't take the initiative when you are upset or likely to overreact. Ruben, Pastor Ruben, put out something in our forum recently about you know, responding and reacting. You know, when we try to correct or speak to our children when we are upset, guess what? You, we, we will do more harm than good. Lots of what we come out will not be, you know, edifying, will not be building up. And uh, if we are reacting, that is where the misuse of uh, uh, spare the rod and spoil the child is very, very wrong. Um, the rod in Psalm 23, it says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Rod is not for destruction. A lot of things we have learned about discipline is actually very wrong. Um, it, 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 these are things that can only actually wound our children, their esteem, and they can even cause them to become fearful in life. You know, when we overreact in something, we miss the mark. Make sure you are stable enough to intervene as well as do that very calmly, okay? Not reacting. Remember that there need to be at least one adult in the situation and let that adult be you, be me. That is really interesting, you know, because sometimes as we engage our children, you don't know who is the adult, you don't know who is the child anymore. You know, we go back and forth, back and it, 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 it should not be the case. We got to be in charge, we got to be in control. Again, we've done so much here about knowing our identity, and that in everything we do, it still counts to who you are who you have come to know. When we know who we are, we are absolutely in control. Your uh, motherhood is not under question. Your authority is not under question. You know, who is in charge is not under question. Because these are the kind of things we, when we are reacting, it's like we are trying to protect something. We are trying to protect ourselves when yourself is not in question whatsoever. But we are looking at the situation objectively and we are treating it that same way, objectively. So number two is staying connected, okay? 
be sure to reach out emotionally to your child when you correct her or him. Children have difficulty feeling love while they experience truth. At that point of correcting, they will not know the difference. Even though they are crying, they will not know about what we are doing. They, they, they think that you are harming them, but the advice or the talk or the situation we are bringing is actually for their good. But they are at the point where they don't know the difference, especially when they are younger. When they are younger, there is a, develop, a developmental milestone for them. And good parents help them reach that goal. Okay? And God has wired every parent to be able to function on that level. Okay? So even when you must be very direct, do not pull away emotionally. Hear your child out and stay connected with her feelings, as in this example. Okay? This is me again. I said, I understand, you know, you, I understand you are feeling I'm being unfair and you are upset and angry too. Okay, and then your child will say, well, you won't let me see my friends. Okay, and here is uh, my response again to this. You are right. I'm drawing the line with these three kids. I know you really like them and want to be with them. And the child will say, there's nothing wrong with hanging with them. You are being so unfair to me. And then this is what I will say. You are very mad at me. I know. I understand that. And I am sorry for you, you know, for you feel this way. I want to talk to you about a decision, you know, about my decision so that at least you will know I don't oh know what I'm talking. Give me one second, please. Oh, sorry, sorry for that. Yes. yes. Yeah. So these are our reactions, the way we respond, the way we engage, the way we do uh, conversation like this. So going further than, we, than talking, so with grown-ups, often the conversation is all you need. You make the person aware of the problem and stay your desires as well as requests. And the problem is on the way to being resolved. However, children are different because they are still forming a connection between words and experiences. They may need you to go further than just talking or giving warning. Okay, so be prepared to establish consequences that are appropriate to any situation. Be prepared. Be prepared, it is essential. Many parents assume they have done their job when they have had, you know, when they have had the talk, however, help your child to understand that the talk has actions behind it, okay? How to contain and empathize. Confrontation may cause your child to feel as though you don't care. 
nothing you do will be able to convince them otherwise for now. That is, you know, this is not a time to try to prove your love with facts, but it is a time to contain their protest, their anger, and the emotional distance from you, and to empathize with their miseries. Okay? So if your child insists that you don't care about her, say something like this. I really do love you, but it looks like I can't convince you of that right now. After you have said something, no, we are in charge. I've met families who think, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I've lost control. I've lost my children. I've, I, can't, I can't do anything. That is the word that any parent can think or come under. Because when this begins to happen, it's like we, 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 we are relegating really our responsibilities as parents. You know, we begin to feel that we can't help anymore. We can. We can always. I, you know, they can push boundaries. I remember one practical experience where there is um, this mother that came to ask for help because the daughter, a teenager, a 13 year old, will always, always every morning, she will make the mother go late to, to work because she, can, she won't get up. She will spend most of the night, you know, playing on her phone. And uh, then she will sleep late, but getting up in the morning becomes a real, real problem. And uh, when the mom comes to ask for help, and she, she repeatedly will go, you know, go late to her work and keep giving reason and reason. And they pull her aside and say, you know, that, uh, that your late coming has become a concern to this work. Um, you, if something has to be done or else maybe you might lose your job. She was so destroyed, you know, distraughted by that, that that was why she went for help. And she said, what am I going to do? This is what my child is doing. <laughs> we said, okay. Um, she's 13. Yep. And uh, she, you know, when you say, let's get up and get ready, she won't. When you are ready to leave the house, that's when she will get up. That's when she wants to have breakfast. And then that's when she wants to have shower. And when she gets into shower, she wants to stay there for 30 minutes. Said, okay, what will happen? Tell her once. Tell her that you are going to leave so, so, and so time. Don't repeat it twice. Tell her that. If whether she's ready or not, that you're gonna go anyway, and uh, you 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 will also drop her off at school at that time. Mm -hmm. So that day came, and um, she's she's went in and spoke and tell her, said, "Honey, we are leaving so and so time. Get up and get ready." And she did not come back again. Previously, she would say that about five, six, seven times. And she will not give up, you know, she'll just stay there. But anyway, what happened was uh, part of the strategy was if she, you know, didn't, it means that she will get her on still on her pajamas and assist her into the car, put her school bag, and gonna drive her to school that day. And um we'll will uh let her come down and and then you will say to her honey have a great day i'm going i'm off to work and she did exact that the next, that morning when uh, she told her that i'm you know i'm coming so and so time she kept her word and she was cool there was no nagging there was no repeated shouting she when she wasn't ready she encouraged her she get up and uh, she said, okay, follow me. She was following, not knowing where she was going. And they get outside. 
She opened the car, said, okay, honey, get in. She was looking. She thought it was a joke, but she meant it. She got inside and she put a bag and she started the car. She was still thinking it was a joke until she found that they are at school. And when they pull at the school gate and he said, honey, you got to come down because I'm, I'm going to work. I'm not going to go late. And uh, she opened the door and she was looking at her, still thinking it was a drama. It wasn't a drama. It was real. Now, she said, come down, see you. When she looked around and the, the, the embarrassment was so much that the next morning, before even the mother come and knock at the door and said, you know, honey, we are, she was up already. Now, because of she had never really stood and be firm and in you know, what she was doing in the past, she allowed the whole thing to deteriorate to that stage. But you know, after that day, she never let to school again because now she knew the mother was serious. Okay, was she angry? Absolutely, yes. Was she? throwing some tantrum, oh yes, but that was not uh, in any way discouraging or stop her from experiencing that she changed. No, here is, it says, uh, the mother will say, I'm sorry you feel disconnected from me. It must be hard to feel that, but I want to come back to the problem with your grade. In other words, always focus on the issue no matter the outcome, you know, how they are you know, trying to react. Yeah. Okay. This is hard for a parent to do. We tend to think, you know, we, we, we tend to think our children will be swayed by logic as well as clarity. Many a time it doesn't work like that. Why this is true sometimes don't make that your agenda, especially when your child is full of strong emotion. Great healing and connecting power rests in being empath you know, empathetic over as well as repeatedly. Okay. Remember your child's age and their maturity levels. Gear your boundary talk to the appropriate development, you know, developmental level of your children. Okay, children go through many emotional and rational and intellectual development stages. Try not to communicate on either too low or too high, a level for your child to understand. We speak to them on appropriate, appropriate uh, age level. You may say to a toddler, don't hit your little sister or I will put you in timeout. But to a teen, we may require something totally different. We might say, you may not be aware of it, but it's starting to seem like the family needs to revolve around your needs and your schedule. I want you to know that's how we feel. And I want you to try to pay more attention to what everyone else is into. It's not just only you. Okay, see, see, see the world change, change completely by saying, I'm aware, you know, I'm aware. Or you may not be aware yourself. Things are revolving only, it's like only you, but you're not the only person in this house that are others. So we are a family, it's not just all about you, it's about others also. That is a strategy, okay? The, this one is on normalizing protest and anger. When you correct your child, you take a stand against 
his immaturity, self-centeredness and lack of self-control. Okay? So you draw a line against those aspects of her characters that need to grow. It is a central aspect of all good parenting, helping to form the character. You know, our whole theme for the year of our conference is until Christ is formed in you. Mm -hmm. Christ formed in you is a whole strategy growing spiritually. But then can you imagine our children, the character, the truth character and things really begin to form in their life as we begin to speak life into, you know, into them. Okay. So you stand in between him and what he wants when he wants it. Okay. We are always, always on top of the game. We are not overwhelmed by the situation, but we are out to help at all times. She will often protest or get angry or say she hates you from confronting her. I had the uh, uh, you know, children saying to their parents, I hate you, I hate you. You know, that's an emotional outburst, but that should not in any way data us because that's part of their job to test the limit, find that it holds, give up and accept that life is something bigger than they are. Yeah. When they say it, it's just an emotional outburst. Don't now go that say, oh, my, my kids say they hate me. You know, how can my kids hate me? There is nothing like that. You are still in charge. Don't take it personal because they are growing. Okay? This is how children mature. So don't be caught off guard, surprised, or disappointed by your child's resistance to your confrontation. We don't have to. Okay. Realize that things are going as they should. Nothing will take you by surprise. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing ever take our Heavenly Father by surprise. Nothing. If your child resists, say something like this. I know you are really angry at me right now. I understand it's hard to lose your privileges, but no, I'm not changing my mind. When they know we are serious, they will fall in line. They begin to understand. Remember, everything that is happening is preparing them for the world out there. By the time our children are ready to go out, at least we know that they can face the world. They are not going to fall prey. The world out there is not going to teach them what they have not learned from home. It's not like that. And uh, each and every one of our children are a blessing from God. We look at them. We, are, we see how God sees them. We are not seeing them by what they do. We are seeing them by who they are, okay? Allow some withdrawal, but not forever. So what this means is that when you confront, your child may pull away from you emotionally in anger or disappointment, okay? That's not the end of the world. Some parents have difficulty tolerating that distance. They want to feel close to their children, okay? This can be a real problem because the child needs some freedom to pull away from you and not like, and not like you for a while. If your child says, I don't like you, that's not the end of the world. That will not make you to undo everything you have done for, so that they will like you. You know, discipline, Help, so, help us form good characters. And characters is things that is gonna live with us forever. Because a child today is going to become a parent of tomorrow. And what we help them to learn now 
they will use it to train their own children and the world keep going on, okay? Say something like this. I understand that you are mad at me now. What, you know, for what happened? But mad is different. Mad is different than saying, staying withdraw permanently. Again, we help them to differentiate. Mad, getting mad is different from withdrawing and never want to do anything from me or not talking. You know, we always open and keep a line of communication. We don't just allow things to. And that's why if, if we keep uh, the uh, silence for too long, it becomes a war. It's no more boundary now. It becomes war. And we, in, in between parents and children, wall begin to form. And uh, if it, that wall solidifies, it can be a big problem as time goes on, okay? It's not good for us to be this disconnected. I need to find out what you are feeling so we can work something out. Again, this is another way to break that silence, is to say, listen, son or daughter, it's really not good for us to be disconnected. I need to find out what you are feeling so we can work things out we can work something out, okay? That also open the line of communication. Some questions for reflection, okay? So I, the one, one question says, uh, what are some of the character, strengths or weaknesses that you already see in your children? As you, for those of us that still have, uh, you know, have kids, what strength or weakness can we see? Character strength and weaknesses that we can see in our children. It is very, very important. Second question say, what feelings do you expect to have when your child resists consequences? You put out things and um, the child resisted. They use tend to think it's your fault or, you know, I'm a bad parent. I haven't done what I should do. Or do we still, you know, see opportunity to take our stand instead of giving up? Third question is asking, what will you do to enforce the consequences? So if there is resistance, how else will you make sure that you still maintain the standard that the value, the truth value that you know or if there is a resistance, will that make us lower and say, okay, well, we give in. You know, that will not be a healthy idea to give in, give in, give in, because this is going to, in turn, begin to cause resentment. Because remember, the problem with boundary is if we don't establish boundaries, we end up, we will be the ones that end up being resentful and angry. And, uh, you know, even though the person have no, you know, is enjoying their life, but we are the ones that are suffering the pain, suffering, you know, the whole thing. It should not be. Boundary defines what we are responsible and what we are not responsible. Things that we keep in and things that we keep out. You know, so that is very powerful. And the lastly, in what situation will your child, sorry, in what situation with your child did you carry the worry, the strain and effort rather than letting the problem be his or hers? You know, instead of letting, allowing them to go through or take responsibility for 
their own choices or actions, we carry it for them. And uh, a lot of parents, we, we do that a lot, but should we? I guess these are things we will discuss or uh, respond to now as topic 